We're four friends who live across the globe and share a love of Bon Appetit's YouTube channel. So we came together to bring you our thoughts on what BA serves up and try our hands at recreating their dishes. Welcome to Pod Appetit. Hello, Pod Appetit listeners. It is I, Justine, back again. I feel like I haven't had a solo episode in a while, but this one was foretold. Let's take a trip back. All the way back to December 2019. Friend of the show and fellow Lady Pod Squad member Erica from the podcast Les Represent wrote in to us and said, I was catching up on Pod Appetit last night and then I had a dream. I was watching BA and they had Justine on as a guest because she had created the vegan version of Totino's and she called them Justino's. Then, Merry Christmas. A few days after we got this message, BA did indeed release Pastry Chef Attempts to Make Gourmet Pizza Rolls. So it was decided there and then that I would attempt to make from scratch vegan pizza rolls or, as they are known, Justino's. So that is what I'm going to do today. Like my other uh, sort of vegan makes episode where I made vegan Snickers. I'm not using the recipe Claire provides, though I did watch the episode to get some tips and tricks. Though there are a lot of people on Pinterest who have made homemade pizza rolls. So I went there first. I gathered seven recipes to look at. I think five of them were vegan um, because like I said, it's been done. But so many people try so many varieties and the differences and the similarities, oh, we're crazy. Yes, guys, I'm a big nerd and I took many notes on seven different recipes to make pizza rolls. What's surprising in the non-vegan recipes, most people opted to use egg roll or wonton wrappers instead of making their own bread or pizza dough. Some people did use pre-made pizza dough from the store. Some people made everything from scratch. Some people used a variety of ingredients, especially in the vegan version, like somebody used vegan ricotta and mozzarella and shredded jackfruit. So that was a bit uh, wild. And I think one of the other big differences is that some people baked the pizza rolls and some people fried the pizza rolls. So I have actually, for the first time ever, have made my own recipe, and that's the one I'm going to use today. I've taken some of my favorite things from this, some tips from Claire, and I don't know how I'm gonna do. It's gonna be pretty nerve wracking for me, I think. I'm already nervous, and this is the first time of making something from scratch for my own recipe. Uh, like Claire, I decided to go to the Italian sausage route because as soon as she said that, I was like, yes. I made this amazing tempeh Italian sausage for Thanksgiving that went into my uh, Thanksgiving stuffing. It was amazing. It was the best. My roommate at the time, she was just like, this tastes exactly like Italian sausage. So I want to do that. I want to include some fresh basil. I want to make my own dough. The only thing I'm not going to make my own of is the sauce because I feel like you're using so little of it that you would have to get a lot of ingredients. I don't know, I, I got a marinara sauce. Oh, and I will be using vegan mozzarella cheese because even in the episode, Claire's like, this isn't real cheese. And I was like, sounds vegan to me. <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of different recipes online. Some that look exactly like little ravioli, some that they promise you can freeze. Some that didn't look great, the dough looked thick, or they looked blob-like. I don't know, I'm not saying I'm gonna make something perfect, but I'm pretty happy with the research I've done. I've also bought some new tools that I may need. I bought a candy and deep fry thermometer, uh, because you know I'm gonna fry up this, because Claire did it, and I think it's the right way. And I bought a bench scraper, just to cut my dough like a professional. And I bought an adjustable rolling pin so that when I roll out my dough, it can be all even. It's gonna be pretty crazy up in here. <laughs> oh, and if I sound different, it's because I am using a new Lav clip-on microphone that my dad got me because he's been nitpicking my audio 
since I was born because he's a musician. So I am going to gather up and prepare all of my ingredients first because I don't think that's a real necessary part of the episode. I'll tell you everything that I put in, but I want to get everything ready because I'll be making the dough from scratch, letting it sit, making the Italian sausage, and then making all the filling and Oh my god, now I'm nervous again. Okay, let's go. Okay, let's see. I am still feeling very anxious about doing this, but I'm just gonna... Okay, I'm gonna start with my dough. I was originally planning on doubling this, but since I'm not sure how it's gonna go, I may make it just as is, and if I have extra filling, I can freeze that and save that for later. I've got my food scale because the first thing I'm going to need is four and a half ounces of all-purpose flour plus one teaspoon vital wheat gluten. Let's do it. Okay, A, P, flour. Am I in ounces? I am in ounces. Four and a half, two, three. Oh, I got... There, four and a half ounces there's a fire truck going by. I got my four and a half ounces of all-purpose flour. I need one teaspoon of vital wheat gluten. So I gotta open this up. Vital wheat gluten I had to get at Whole Foods because the Ralphs I, had, I went to didn't have it. There. What's next? Da, 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 da. Two tablespoons aquafaba. As you know from watching BA, aquafaba is the liquid that you get in a can of chickpeas, as Carla likes to call it, bean juice. There's one and two. I'm gonna use these chickpeas probably this week to make some lunch, some chickpea mash sandwiches. Half a teaspoon of salt. Half a teaspoon. Got my salt right here. Ba, ba, ba. And a fourth a cup of water. Fourth a cup. Combine flour, vital wheat gluten, salt, and aquafaba in a stand mixer fitted with a dough hook. Blend until it forms small crumbles. Then add water. Oh, guys, I already messed it up. Ugh. Okay, I'm just like not reading, not doing it right. I'm gonna start this over. Ugh, like Claire. Starting it all over. Okay. For real, sees this time. Okay. Take two. Let's get uh, four ounces, four and a half ounces AP flour. Scoop. Drop, drop, drop onto the scale. This is going in the stand mixer. I've never used a dough hook. Oh my God, I'm so nervous. Teaspoon, vital wheat gluten. <laughs> I just started and I already messed up step one. Half a teaspoon of salt. Two tablespoons aquafaba. Give me your precious, precious bean juice. Now what's the proper way to do this? Combine flour, wheat gluten, salt, aquafaba, stand mixer fitted with dough hook. Blend until it forms small crumbles. Then add water slowly while still processing. Dough will come together into a ball. You may not need all the water. Let's get some water. You know, the best way to learn how to do something is to record yourself at the same time. <laughs> so good. I got my dough hook on. I gotta raise my bowl. Ugh, there she goes. She's locked and loaded. Let's plug her in. There's not a lot in there. Okay, I've added some water because before that it was doing nothing. It feels like it just keeps needing more water. Are you, are you dough yet? Need some more water. Have some water. Be some dough. Oh, I'm just like, oh God, I'm fucking up on the first 
the, the, uh, okay, move on, move on. Okay, it could be dough. It could be. Lower, please. What do you feel like? It's definitely not entirely incorporated. Mush it with my hands. But there's still some like dry flowery bits at the bottom. Little crumbles at the bottom. Dough feels like it's getting a bit overworked. I'm just gonna add a little more water. Bet it all the fourth a cup of water. Oof, wish I knew what I was doing. Okay, what do you what do you feel like now? Are you coming together more? Are you playing nice? The rest of the dough? Oh! I like this. This feels like I can knead it. It's not super pretty. I just want like touch more water. Oh god, it's so wet. It's too wet. Oh god. I've made so many mistakes. This is too wet. Oh god. I have made mistakes. I have made mistakes. Mistakes I have made. Oh god. This is terrible. This is this is bad. This is bad. I gotta start over. This is bad. Okay, this time I'm gonna be patient. Wait for small crumbles. I'm not even I'm not even gonna use this. Dough hook is wigging me out. Adding a little bit of water. Oops. I may have added a little too much water again, but we may be fine. Let's do this. Okay. Now we're starting. This is, oh, this is, this is dough. I recognize dough. Okay. Okay. Don't get sticky. Don't get sticky. Just roll. Just roll. Just roll. Okay. No more water. No more water. No more water. That was about the one for us. Yes. Be... Be the dough, be the dough you were meant to be. Steam believes in you. That means a lot. Oh my God, it's coming together to actually be dough. Oh my gosh, what have I done? Ball, it's a ball, it's a ball, ball of dough. Okay. Oh my gosh, oh my God. Oh God, do not mess up anything else. I think, I think she's dough. I think she's dough. The next thing I have to do is let the dough rest. I am going to wrap it in plastic wrap and let it rest for 30 minutes. During that time, I will hit the stove and do something I've done before, which is make the tempeh Italian sausage. Okay. Rest, my mighty creation. Okay, now I'm over at the stove. I'm going to make my tempeh sausage. And first I'm going to heat a large skillet over medium heat. And what I've done is I've cut up my eight ounces of tempeh to be quite small little niblets. You could also use a box grater, but I don't have a box grater. So I cut it with a a knife. I cut it with a knife. And now I'm going to add the tempeh to the skillet with two tablespoons of water. It's going to steam until all the water is absorbed and I'm going to keep stirring it a bit. A little stirry stir. Okay, before she really starts a stick into the pan. What I'm going to add is all the spices and some minced garlic. My spices today are half a tablespoon fennel seed, half a tablespoon dry basil, one half plus one fourth teaspoon smoked paprika, half a tablespoon dried oregano, one fourth teaspoon crushed red pepper flakes, and half a teaspoon dried sage. And Girl, it smells like Thanksgiving. I love it. Okay. 
one and a half clove minced garlic going in. We like that. And let's get our spices in. I'm a professional because I pre-measured them out so I can just dump them all at once. Now we're going to toast this for about a minute till it's fragrant. It's going to be hella, hella dry, but let's stir everything, get some coverage of everything. It looks good. I like these spices together. Let's get it a little crispy it up. We're going for sausage. Oh man, that fennel though, that fennel is what makes that sausage smell sausage. Mm. Toasty, toasty. Bring out that aroma. Okay, now I'm going to add some wet ingredients, which are two tablespoons of soy sauce, half a teaspoon pure maple syrup, and one and a half tablespoons of olive oil. The first time I made this, I like literally almost forgot the olive oil and I was like, why so dry? We're gonna um, let this cook for about five minutes, five to eight minutes until brown and crispy to the crisp factor that you like. Oh, it looks so good. I'm like, I knew I'd be happy with this part because I'm like, I've done this before. It's really simple. Just trying to get an even distribution, I'm trying to get the pieces small and even. Oh, there goes the buzzer for the dough. This makes a whole heck of a lot and I'm not quite sure I, uh, how much I'll need until I know how much I need in the in my mixins, it's definitely gonna be less than this. Turn that off. I'm gonna give that a taste. I like it, I think it'll go really well with the sauce. Here I am just lightly flouring my work surface. After resting, divide dough into two portions, rolling out on a lightly floured work circuit surface. Roll each portion to about one eighth thickness or thicker in a long rectangular shape. See how she did. Pretty nervous about this dough. Okay. I'm using an adjustable rolling pin set to one eighth thickness. Yeah, this does not make that much. I'm going to have way a lot of foiling for this baby. I like working with this um, adjustable rolling pin because I know exactly how much pressure to put, which is all of it, because it's just gonna go as far as it can. Okay, should I roll out the other piece? It's definitely a weird, difficult project. Don't I keep referring it to like all week? Like, I gotta work on my project this weekend. It's not just like, oh, I'm gonna cook this thing. I'm like, this is major Claire difficulty problem solving. Stuff I've never done before. But that's why I'm here to learn. It's sort of the meaning of life and all. Yeah, we're getting deep as we roll out this dough. And this is rolling out fairly nicely. Why am I such a fan of the second piece more than the first one? I'm like, I did it. I did it good. What's it say to do next? Da 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 da. Combine filling ingredients and dollop one table sized portions along the dough. Wet around the filling. Top of the second portion of the dough. Press the seal around each area of the filling and cut with a knife to separate each pizza roll. Repeat rolling and filling process. Right now they'd be pretty thick pizza rolls. I forget how Claire said how big a pizza roll was. I don't care. They're Justinos. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Let's uh, let's go over to the filling station and talk about filling. I was thinking, based off of everybody's recipes, they were all very different. Like one fourth to one cup marinara sauce. I know that is a huge discrepancy. Half a cup of mozzarella, half a cup, I'm adding the fresh basil. 
which I might hold off on adding all that if I'm gonna freeze the rest of it. And maybe about like a cup of the Italian sausage. I think I'm just gonna have to test it. Get my testing spoons, here we are. There they are. Chris Morocco, that's how you call him. <laughs> okay, got my Daya shreds. Mozzarella. Let's do a half a cup of these. There we go. Maybe we started with a half a cup of sausage. Maybe a little more. Who cares? I like it a sausage. Going for a marinara, not a pizza sauce. Because I'm wild. I'm wild like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. I think the half a cup of marinara. I think it's looking pretty okay. Everything is getting nice and coated, but it's not like a wet, wet, drippy, drippy thing. I like it. Let me add some basil. Fresh basil. Claire didn't do this. I mean, she actually did in her homemade sauce. I just did like a couple little, um, Maybe not even a fourth of a cup, but like a little salt base of basil. The cheese looks weird because it's vegan cheese. Get my spoony tester. Mmm. 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 Can I just eat this right now? Throwing in a little more basil. Gosh, I feel like maybe it needs more sauce, but maybe it doesn't because of the frying process. I think this is it. I think it's going to be our mixture. It's yummy. It's super yummy. Okay. I need a table, set a tablespoon of filling, but that seems like a lot. I want to do like half of that. I make my uh, Justino's teeny tinies. I have no idea if this is going to work. Okay, I'm going to plop this down. Plop this down. Come on, get out. Oh, this is stressful. Today, I will be making three pizza rolls after all of this. What the dough? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Come on. Okay. Let's place one on top of the other. Pushing, pushing down. Trying to not do air bubbles. Because that was a big Claire problem. I don't know if this is going to work. Okay, now I'm going to cut in between them and cut them out. Big love pillows right here. I feel like I broke the seam on that one already. It's hard. It's a hard thing to do. Should I attempt to make three uh, Justinos to start with? Oh, this one's already popped open too. Seal back up. Stay sealed. I swear to God, if you explode, I'm coming for you. Okay, let's set up our oil. Let's let's do this. I'm recording this for posterity because this may go bad. One's gone in. It kind of didn't say how long to um, do it before you flip. Ooh, definitely got some crispy brownness. Oh, oh my gosh. Look at this golden wonder. Please don't explode. You look so good so far. This may be done. I want a little, little more. I can't believe I'm doing this. It's just like, I don't want it to be a point where it looks like nice and crispy on the outside and then you bite into it and you get like just that raw dough going down, you know? I'm taking her out, putting her on some paper towels. Oh my gosh. Oh my God, I'm getting oil everywhere. <laughs> Let's do another one. There you go. Ooh. Okay, yeah, I added a lot more oil this time. Maybe too much. I'm only meant to add like a little bit. Don't explode. Whoop! That one's getting super golden. That one was too hot. Too hot to handle. I'm pulling you out, kid. You look burnt. Okay. No, not so bad. I have to see what these look like inside, but first I have to take pictures of them. And then I want to make more. Oh my God, I actually want to make more. Okay, hang on. Okay, I cut open the pizza rolls. I like the look of the inside. It might be raw dough though. I have to taste it. Hmm. Mm. It's chewy. 
but it's chewy like a Totino's. Wow, the flavor definitely tastes like a Totino's. Oh, I'm gonna try one that didn't fry as long because it was too hot. Hmm, you know what, I like it. It is a pretty much doughy on the inside, but tastes good. I kind of can't stop eating these. Wow, it, wow. Okay, I'm gonna make a few tweaks, but I'm not gonna record that. I'm gonna talk with one of my pot appetit ladies and let them know how it all went down. Stay tuned. Hey guys, I am back here now with Amanda. Hello. Yes, I have made some tweaks like I said I would, and now I'm going to tell my dear friend Amanda the journey of Justino's. <laughs> Yay, Justino's! Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I had intended to put this up as a recipe tomorrow, but like I think the hardest part in this like recipe building is like I'm trying to get all the exact things where it uses everything. Yeah. But right now in my head, I would still have like that leftover tempeh sausage. And like, I don't think you could do anything with that. So I'm like in my head still right now, like the day before this is to be released. I'm like, I don't have a final recipe yet. We'll see how that is at the end of the day when this is released. <laughs> when you, I'm just impressed that you developed your own recipe. Like it's I'm, crazy. I'm so proud of you, Justine. It's amazing. Thank you. I have never felt more like Claire ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Like, I messed up, I rethought things, and can I just jump ahead and say, when people tried these, like, I brought them to my work, and people were like, A, they taste just like Totino's, B, they taste better, because you can actually taste, like, herbs and spices, you Ooh. know? They're, like, biting in, like, is that fennel seed? Like, <laughs> <laughs> look at you go, girl. I know, like, it's a freaking gourmet mix, like, yes. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> like I had my own moments where, you know, my own Delaney <laughs> would come up and be like, this is better than the original. And I'm oh like, I'm so Claire. Okay, <laughs> so rewind to how I got there. Okay. Where we last left off, I had made my first batch and my roommate said they were delicious. They were perfect. And she's been talking about them for a while since. I think I did this like a week ago, maybe mm -hmm. a week and a half ago. But and then she was still talking about them last night of like, ooh, you should like keep making those and like sell them and stuff like <laughs> So the the filling was really good. The problem with the first batch I had was that they were a little too thick. With the like the pastry or mm -hmm. whatever. Okay. But like still like delicious and crispy on the outside, but they had like more of a chew than you would normally get with Totinos. Okay. So before in that first batch, I was rolling them out to an eighth of an inch thickness using my brand new adjustable rolling pin. Ooh. So then I upped that with my second batch. I rolled them out to one sixteenth, which is about two millimeters thickness. Okay. Very thin. It wasn't raw on the inside, but it was still kind of doughy on the inside. Oh, okay. I gotcha. And also for my second batch, I doubled the dough recipe. So I think I made like, yeah, I used nine ounces of all-purpose flour, two teaspoons of vital wheat gluten, four tablespoons of aquafaba, a teaspoon of salt, and almost all of a half a cup of water. Like there was just a very teeny tiny bit. And I actually, I think I definitely had a journey of how to make this sort of dough and like yeah. how much water to use. Like that was... That was really hard, and I learned a lot. So by the second batch, I did it. <laughs> you went through a lot of versions of the dough, right? Like, you really did do a full, like, gourmet mix. It wasn't so much, like, the versions of it. It's just that, like, first of all, I didn't <laughs> I didn't read my own recipe and did it wrong straight out. Oh. And then, like, my second try, it just didn't come together quite right. And then by the third try, I really just went like all in with my hands and really kind of felt the texture of the dough and mm. when it needed water. Like, I think it's that real like learning curve right there of like when they say like, this is what the dough when it's crumbly, you should add water or when it's shaggy, but mm. not too sticky. Like as soon as it gets sticky, I'm like, ah, it's over. I ruined it. <laughs> Throw it away. 
So yeah, I doubled the dough recipe so that I could make 12, which is what I intended to make in the first place. I don't know why the original dough recipe only made half of what the recipe said it would make. Maybe it's because of the thicker dough. (gasps) Oh, maybe. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're probably right about that. (laughs) Everything else, like I had all the filling stuff kept the same and I used a fourth a cup of chopped fresh basil instead of half a cup, which I originally thought. It's a, okay. It was the point where I was like seeing how it combined yeah, and then yeah. being like, okay, I only need this much. Like, Yeah, like, oh, okay, a little heavy on that basil there. <laughs> yeah, like real recipe development. It was crazy. I've never oh done anything goodness. like this before. <laughs> oh, you're a real cook now. <laughs> We're going to have to start calling you Chef Justine. (laughs) Yeah, so that's basically it. Like, I was just tweaking it and getting it to the right thinness. I think that was Mm -hmm. kind of the most important thing. Everything else, I think, tasted great. Like, the the tempeh sausage I got from a recipe that I used for Thanksgiving, my uh, my Thanksgiving stuffing had it in there. Oh, right, right. Yeah, I remember Mm -hmm. that. Yeah, so that I made from scratch. And I think that really helped because people were really liking that. And it wasn't like chunks of sausage or whatever. Mm -hmm. They more so got like all the spices that were in there. Like I said, like the oregano, the red pepper flakes, the sage, the garlic cloves, like the soy sauce, the maple syrup. Like they could like. Yeah, they make me hungry. It's so crazy when they like bit into it and they're like, oh my God, this has actual ingredients in it, which is so weird to think about like when you are like eating, you know, processed foods. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. And I mean, I honestly, uh, was it last weekend, the weekend before I got I, on my way home from a rehearsal, I got some uh, pizza rolls to eat <laughs> at home because I was like... I don't know. I was in a, I think I had seen some Pocky and I was like in a gourmet makes mood and I was like, I probably yes. shouldn't get Pocky. Not that, I don't know, not that pizza rolls are that much better for you, but less sugar, yeah. I guess. <laughs> I would say these are a pain in the butt to make, okay. but I think you could streamline it. Like if you make the filling, I think you can make the filling like ahead of time and just like refrigerate it like mm-hmm. Claire often does. Like that's fine. If it's cold going into the, to the dough. Yeah. And like that's even better because it like sticks together more. All right. So it's like if you make that filling like a day ahead of time, then you want to make the dough. The dough is pretty easy. Like it's just like those four ingredients, but it's just getting the right texture of it, consistency, mm-hmm. you know, make sure it's not too sticky, not too dry. And then you just let that rest for 30 minutes and then you roll it out. You roll out the two pieces. Yeah. Take a half a tablespoon of the filling I found to be the perfect amount and then yeah just like just like Claire does you know you put the the one on top of the other and cut them Mm -hmm. oh my gosh you're so fancy thank you I didn't have any problems with explosions either (laughs) Ooh, well done golf clap for you it was a pain in the butt it took a lot of math but in the end I killed it in the final product yeah I would say I mean when you shared the pictures, I thought they were beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I and like you just talking about it, it's made me so hungry. Like as you know, <laughs> I'm home for my lunch break from a job right now. So <laughs> I was like, oh man, now I want to go to Kroger and pick up some pizza rolls. Fl- or I'll fly to LA and eat some Justinos. I had one question. Did you end up going the full like trying to freeze them and then reheat them or did you not bother with that nonsense no and they were fine refrigerated they are the best fresh of course when yeah. i had to bring them to work they were refrigerated and then we microwaved them and i was like i'm sorry guys they're microwaved and they're like whatever it's pizza rolls it's what they're like yeah and i'm like but really they're the best right out of frying them i can imagine they'd be all crispy oh mm-hmm. man you have to be able to do it like when it's just right, especially for the dough. And because if not, it'll start to get finicky. But I think that's true with most baking and, and dough. <laughs> yeah. I mean, from all the great British bake-offs that I've seen, that it, it's all about how long you let the dough 
re- rest and mm-hmm. proof and everything. Yeah. No, it was definitely an experience. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go on Great British Bake Off now and, and bring my pizza rolls. <laughs> oh, Chef Justine. <laughs> I feel like I should, we have, should have like a cheesy 80s montage, like, yeah, where we jump in the air and we freeze. That's how it ends. Yep. One, two, three, three. jump! <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening to Pot Appetit, a Bon Appetit fan cast. We'd love to hear from you, so find us on Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest at pod underscore appetit. And on Facebook at Pod Appetit Podcast. You can also email us at podappetitpodcast at gmail.com and find all of our episodes on our website, podappetitpodcast.com. Until next time, the test kitchen is closed. We interrupt your regularly scheduled podcast programming. And we're not sorry. I'm Harmony. And I'm Maggie. And we're Rebel Girls Book Club. We're here to take an intersectional feminist approach to books from all over the spectrum. Bestsellers? We've got you covered. That one book from English class you hated while you read but you can't forget? We've got that too. Comic books? Nonfiction? It's all right here. So grab your tea, grab your blanket, and cue up your favorite podcast app of choice. Let's get rebellious about your new favorite reads.